Hello and welcome back. Today I've got some log cabin blocks for you. Um, log cabin quilts are very traditional. They go back a couple of hundred years and uh, they're very beginner friendly and great for using up scraps. And you know, I like my scraps. So I keep um, these in, a, in this little box. It's an ongoing project. I, I come back to it uh, regularly whenever I have a, a stack of uh, strips ready to use up. And um, the finished size of the blocks, I decided to do um, nine and a half inches and I separate them uh, with a, just a piece of paper, the ones that are finished, trimmed to nine and a half inches. So you can see they look absolutely fabulous and really colorful. To construct the blocks, um, you always start with a square in the middle and I have used two and a half inch squares as well as two inch squares. Um, you can use smaller ones of course if you're making a smaller project, uh, whatever you like. I, I always try and sort of alternate the colour values a little bit. Um, roughly trim it to size. I have a little bit of overhang either side. So you always add the first strip to the top of the first square. And in order to speed things up, I usually prepare a few things, uh, a few blocks for the sewing machine and I make a little pile and I always have the line that I want to sew facing the top. Uh, you can see on this one, um, the square, this was the first strip like that that I added. To add further strips, you want to make a quarter turn anti-clockwise to add the next one. And now for the third strip, I will do another quarter turn and you do this for every strip that you add. When you have a block that has a few strips around it already, it might not be apparent where to add the next one. So one way to just uh, quickly establish uh, where you um, need to go next is to have a look at the lines. So you have a strip and a short end, the same here, strip and a short end, but this one is a single strip. So if you turn it up, you actually end up with this side here where you have two short ends and the middle bit. And this is the one that you will carry on adding to. So if you imagine you've just sewn it, pressed it open, you actually have a strip and a short end again, a long end, and you have the same scenario where you have a short or two short ends sandwiching the middle and this will be the natural um, side to to follow up on for the next one. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I just want to add a little note about the uh, choice of strips um, that you're adding. So with this one here, you can see it's a uh, slightly oblong already. And this side is the next one to add a strip to. So I wouldn't use something as wide as this, for example, although the colors would go, but once it's added minus the half inch, uh, sorry, quarter inch, of course, quarter inch seam allowance, it would be even more oblong. And overall, I do sort of want to retain a rough square um, form uh, so it doesn't get too sort of out of shape. And I would uh, add something a little narrower, like this, for example and then go wider with the next strip. So say you might want to add this now because uh, the width would work really well. The colors look all right. So imagine you would sew this on, quarter inch seam allowance, and then pressed it open. And you would have this little overhang here. Now, the really easy way to get another line uh, ready for sewing 
is to trim this um, from the corner up to here and get rid of this little overhang here and this would then give you really nice wonky lines so instead of straight lines because you're trimming this off this strip here would be tapered and if you do this randomly at uh, various stages of constructing this quilt block um, you'd have sort of really playful uh, freestyle lines um, and I think it uh, yeah just brings it to life so once you've got another uh, batch ready the next step would be to set the seam and press these open and I have covered this in my uh, quilting tutorial so you can uh, I link it above for you you can just uh, watch it over there so you don't have to say watch the same thing again um, once these are pressed open the next thing would be to just trim the line as I mentioned earlier so that you have a, a straight line for adding the next strip to and uh, I trim them on both sides and when I trim these off I don't uh, overthink this uh, too much uh, I do it quite quickly um, if I take my time I would revert to wanting to have really neat angles and this is supposed to be different so the quicker I do it, uh, the more freestyle it gets. And that is actually what I want to achieve um, for the overall look of this quilt. To make the whole process a little bit more efficient, um, I have different piles. And uh, there's one. These are all ready for sewing, so they're all facing the same way. And this pile here is sewn, but needs pressing and trimming. And then I have a third pile which is ready trimmed and uh, to make them bigger they're waiting for the next strip. To keep them in separate um, sort of categories is also a good way to put them away and uh, you know if you want to take a break and uh, then you know where you left off you can just put little strips of paper in between uh, telling you what's what. I just wanted to add a thought on pattern selection. If you're um, using the same pattern more than once, uh, it's a good idea to add it to the quilt blocks at different stages. So here the quilt block is a bit smaller. Uh, this one is much bigger already and it will make it easier later on at a stage um, where it comes to putting the quilt blocks together. It is actually quite a skill to make things look random and uh, to have these at similar places uh, it would make it a little bit more difficult um, it might just look awkward so you have uh, more options if you spread them out a little bit more randomly lastly I just wanted to give you some ideas of how you can put the blocks together and uh, illustrate some of the options that you have and uh, you'll be amazed at how differently um, these can look depending on the design decisions that you make I've taken the um, nine and a half inch squares that are finished already, trimmed to size and uh, just laid them on the floor on top of a, a linen sheet. And in this version, I've uh, put them close together. So this is one option where you literally just join all the squares that are all one size without any sashing in between. Um, the quilt, I think I will make seven blocks wide uh, rather than uh, the four that I've just put on the floor here. Another option would be to put sashing and these are literally just strips of uh, usually a, a solid colour that you can add in between and it's already looking different. Uh, the sashing acts uh, I think as a sort of frame and uh, the colours pop quite a bit more this way, I think. And isn't it amazing how it changes again just by having a different colour? Uh, well, imagine sashing in between. Uh, it looks much lighter, almost more spring, summer-like. And I've widened the gaps as well between the blocks and uh, offset each 
alternate line. Here's another option. You could cut each block uh, diagonally into two pieces and add them to a uh, solid square. That would be quite a fun pattern as well. And it would uh, mean that you only need half the amount of, uh, of the lock cabin blocks as well because they'd go twice as long. And there will be lots of different ways to arrange the triangles as well. I just wanted to show you one more option uh, where I've just randomly laid out different sizes of the blocks and uh, just mix them all together and you could just fill in the gaps with a single colour, with a solid colour or gosh more scraps. I mean anything goes really with this type of quilt um, but having them laid out like this almost reminds me of a picture wall. And I quite like that. So I hope this uh, last section has given you some ideas and uh, you'll uh, have lots of fun and uh, we'll be able to use up some of your scraps as well in the process. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.